This video is about current and voltage. Now this video is so important because electricity can be really hard to get your head around. So if you understand the basics of what current is and what voltage is, then everything later when it gets much more complicated will seem much easier if you understand the basics. So what you should do is pause this video, video re-watch this video and ask questions, but do not move on until you understand current and voltage and what they are really, really well. I'm going to teach you about some different quantities in this module. We're going to learn about current, voltage, resistance and power. And I think you should make a note in some sort of table that looks just like this. The first two columns are the name of the quantity, so the name current and voltage. The second one is the symbol, what symbol we use to recognize it. The name of the unit and the symbol are very different and it's the number one thing for people to get confused on. You'll see why shortly. Then uh, a definition will be good and how it's measured is also very useful. Um, draw that out and we'll fill it in as we go. I'll use this example just to make it clearer. Now time has the name time and the symbol T, but the unit is a second and the symbol is S. So the symbol for its name and the symbol for its unit is different. And you need to be able to do the same with some of the quantities we're going to learn like current and voltage and power and resistance. It would also be good if you could put in a definition and write down how it was measured. The first thing you should do is memorize these definitions and repeat them even if you don't know what they are. These are really important just to memorize and recall because you will get marks for them. The next thing you should do is try and understand what they mean. So in a minute, I'm going to explain some models that will help you understand it. But firstly, we're just trying to memorize these definitions. So current is the rate of flow of charge. Now these are really important words, rate and charge, because it's not just the amount of charge, because there's lots of charge within a metal, but it's the rate of flow. Rate means how quickly that they're moving. So the more charge that moves per second, then the more current there'll be. The symbol for current is I. I think it's based on a French word, but we use I for the symbol of current. Now the unit of current is the ampere or the amp, it's named after a French physicist I think, and it's got the symbol a capital A. Now this is very different from the symbol for current which is a capital I, the unit is in amps and you must be okay with uh, recognizing the, the difference between the two. So the symbol for current is I and the unit is the amp and that has a symbol an A. The last thing you need to know is that to measure current, we use an ammeter. Voltage is the energy per unit charge. So the unit charge are the electrons that move around your metal. And the amount of energy that they have is your voltage. Now they will not move within the metal by themselves. You need to give them some energy and that's what batteries do. The batteries will give the electrons energy and then they'll be able to flow around a metal. Sort of in the opposite of that, when they travel through a component such as a light bulb or a speaker or something, they will lose some energy and then it continues round in its circuit. So these electrons start to gain energy when they go for a battery and then they lose energy when they go for a component. So voltage is the energy per unit charge. The symbol for voltage is a capital V, it must be a capital. And the unit is the volt. So that has a symbol V also. So the unit for voltage is a volt and it's got a capital V and we use a voltmeter to measure voltage. In an, the next video, you will see exactly how to use an ammeter and a voltmeter. 
Electricity is really hard to get your head around because you can't see it. So what we do is we use a model or an, or an analogy that's very similar and it allows us to explain complicated processes with something that we can visualize and therefore when we apply the same rules to the model we can actually work out the answer and then apply it back to the question and it makes the question a lot easier to solve. Here's the first model. As you can see there's a mouse going around a treadmill at the top then there's a pipe with some peas in it and at the bottom there's a paddle wheel. Now as the mouse turns the treadmill the peas will start going round the pipe and then as the peas are pushed around the pipe they will go through the paddle wheel and turn the paddle wheel and then continue moving around the pipe in a continuous circuit they'll go round and round and round. Now this is a very good example of electricity but the important part is we have to relate this back to um, the electrical circuit. This circuit relates to that analogy we were just using. The wires in an electrical circuit were represented in the analogy by the pipes. And in the pipes were P's, but there aren't real P's in a wire. There are free or delocalized electrons that can move about. And in our battery on our electrical circuit, that was related to the treadmill with the mouse in it. Now, as you can see in this example, the balls are able to flow around the circuit and they continuously go round and round. And the battery gives those balls energy to make them go round. Just like the mouse turning the treadmill gave those peas energy so they could carry on moving around those pipes. Now the component on the right does sort of, sort of, the opposite of the battery. If the battery gave energy to the electrons that moved around, the components took energy from those electrons and they turned it into something useful like light or sound. And those electrons continually flow all the way around these wires and as they pass the battery they gain energy and they carry on down the wire and as they go through a component they lose energy and this continuously goes round and round. Now how does that relate to current and voltage? The current is the rate of flow of charge and that represents how fast these P's are moving or how fast this charge is flowing and the voltage relates to how much energy these P's have or how much energy the electrons have. So current is the rate of flow of charge, that's how fast the charges are moving around the wires. And the voltage is the amount of energy per unit charge, or the amount of energy that the electrons have. So if the battery gave the electrons more energy as they go around, there'd be more voltage in the circuit. Let's have a look at a different model. Now every model has its advantages and its disadvantages. So when you look at these models there are some things that aren't exactly true but if you use them in your head to think about as you're answering a question you are able to solve some questions more easily. Here's the model. You have digestive biscuits at the top and there's a plate that goes round um, some sort of circuit. Now the plate on the right has some digestive biscuits on it and as it goes round the circle it passes through a child at the bottom who eats the biscuits and then the plate is empty on the left hand side until it's refilled at the top again and that plate continuously goes round and round this circuit. So pause the video and have a think just for one minute about what each part of this represents. Here are the answers. The plate represents the charge. The packet of biscuits at the top is the battery and the biscuits on the plate on the right hand side represent the energy. 
the baby at the bottom is a component such as a lamp or a light bulb. As the plate goes through the packet of biscuits, it gains more biscuits on the plate. And that relates to the charge or the electrons going through a battery and on the other side they have gained energy. And then they continue to flow down the wire until they get to a component such as a light bulb. And as they go through the component, they lose their energy. Their energy goes into the light of the light bulb. And back to this example, as the biscuits go through the baby, the baby eats the biscuits, and that's the same as taking energy off of the charge. And then the other side, you see that the, the charge on the left has less energy than the charge on the right, and that's because the energy was lost into the component. And the plate continuously goes round and round and round, and it continuously goes round. The number of plates is the same, so the amount of charge is the same, there's the same number of plates. But what is changing is the amount of energy that this charge has, or the number of biscuits on a plate. And that means the amount of energy is changing, but the charge remains the same. So in this example, the current is the same, but the voltage is changing as it goes through. Here's just a continuation of that analogy. Now you can see there's lots of plates of biscuits on the right. They go through the baby and the baby eats the biscuits and then the plates are empty on the left until they get to the battery at the top and then there's biscuits on the plate again. So in the analogy, the battery gives the charge energy. They continue around the circuit until they get to the bulb. Then they lose energy. And which went as light, and then the charge continues to go round until it gets back to the battery. Using the skills you've just learned, can you work out what this woman is? She's counting how many biscuits are on the plate before, and then how many are on the plate after. This lady is the voltmeter. She's representing the voltmeter, I should say. So what she's saying is she's counting the number of biscuits before, counting the number of biscuits after, and then she's noting the difference in the biscuits. How does this relate to the analogy? In a volt, What a voltmeter does is it measures the energy on the charge before, and it measures the energy after, and then it tells you the difference. That's why voltmeters need to be touching both sides of a component. If you look, this lady's touching both sides of the light bulb and she's measuring the energy before and the energy after and what she's noting is the difference. And the technical name for that difference is called the potential difference. And this is what the voltmeter looks like using the circuit symbol. It must touch both sides of the component and it measures the energy of the electrons before, the energy after, and then it tells you the difference. That is really important.